Hello and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Daily Triple, your no shit gaming news video. That's three news stories in one video with zero faff. If there's one thing that Activision Blizzard loves more than anything else, it's money. And to be honest, who can really blame them? It makes the world go round. Something Activision does have a problem with is its staff making money for other people. Activision is suing Netflix for poaching its former CFO, Spencer Newman. Newman worked for Activision for 18 months beginning in late 2018 and was put on leave while the company prepared to fire him. But seemingly before he was officially dismissed from his position at Activision, he took a role with Netflix as its new CFO in 2019. Activision alleged that this constitutes a breach of contract and that Netflix had knowingly induced Newman into leaving. Daniel Petroselli, the lawyer representing Activision, said Netflix's unlawful behavior with regards to Newman is no anomaly. To the contrary, Netflix has demonstrated a pattern of caring only about attracting and employing whoever Netflix wants, regardless of whether it violates the law along the way. Netflix has been accused of poaching staff from other companies in the past, with Petroselli representing Fox in a similar case back in late 2019. Netflix was also challenged by Viacom for interfering with the contractual relationship between its executives last March. The filing against Netflix, unsurprisingly, paints the company in a very tyrannical light. Netflix unapologetically recruits talent without regard to its ethical or legal obligations. To shape its workforce to its desires, Netflix not only ruthlessly fires its own employees that it deems adequate, but is engaged in a years-long campaign of unlawfully poaching executives from Netflix's competitors regardless of their contractual obligations. Part of the reason Activision is pursuing this case is likely due to Newman's departure coming at quite a difficult time for the company. Along with Newman leaving in 2019, Blizzard CEO Mike Morhaime left in October 2018 and was replaced by J. Allen Brack. Around the same time, developer Bungie split from Activision and caused the latter's annual revenue to drop by as much as $400 million. Activision also laid off hundreds of staff in February 2019, though things can't have been too dire since it went on to report record-breaking profits. Netflix has yet to respond to the situation, but in similar legal engagements, maintained that executive contracts are unenforceable under California law. It's unlikely that we'll get an answer either way anytime soon, but if Netflix loses one case, I'd expect it to lose them all. Ultimately, this won't mean anything to grunts like you or me, and it's just corporations flexing on each other over staff who earn more in a day than we'll ever see in a lifetime. In related news, the Call of Duty franchise has just passed 3 billion in earnings over the past year. That's 3 capital b -b 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 billion with just one franchise. Net bookings are up 80%, and units sold of mainline COD games are up 40% year over year. Despite all this success and my general distaste for Activision as a company, it does seem to me that they are probably in their right to go after Netflix about this, and I'm certainly no fan of the way Netflix does business, as there are several reports of how badly it treats its employees. And next up, if you asked me what my favorite video game franchise was, it would probably change day to day, but there's a good chance that Metal Gear Solid would come up often. The first MGS game launched for PlayStation 1 back in 1998 and defined a generation of games to come. From cinematic storytelling to groundbreaking stealth gameplay, we've waited more than two decades to see the game be brought to life on the big screen, and that may finally be happening with Oscar Isaac taking the role of Snake. The project has been in development since 2012 in some shape or form, and has seen a number of different creatives attached to it. Currently, the creative lineup is Oscar Isaac playing Solid Snake, Jordan Vogue Roberts is the director, Derek Connolly is writing the script, and Avi Arad is a producer. Each of these folks has a couple of hits under their belts, but also a couple of misses. Oscar Isaac is perhaps best known to mainstream audiences as Poe Dameron from the Star Wars sequels, and frankly, the less said about those the better. Despite those movies being largely disliked by the fanbase, Isaac's performance is undoubtedly one of my highlights, and he actually has an arc in a couple of the movies. I know, it's hard to believe. He also showed up in the Oscar-winning, pun intended, science fiction drama Ex Machina, the Netflix original movie Triple Frontier, which was surprisingly compelling for an action movie, and the ill-fated X-Men Apocalypse where he played the titular villain. Even though his acting couldn't save that X-Men movie, he is still one of the best working actors today, and is a big name to get for the project, especially in the title role. Isaac has also expressed his interest in the property several times in the past, such as this interview where he said he wanted to play Snake. It's very video Metal Gear gaming. Solid, that's the one I'm really... Really? Yeah, I, that, that, I'm throwing my hat in for that one. <laughs> Who'd you play? Snake, man. Enthusiasm like that doesn't definitively mean the film or his performance will be amazing, but it's still a very good sign that he actually gives a shit. Director Jordan Vogue Roberts is a relative newcomer to the world of showbiz, only getting his directorial debut in 2011 on TV. His biggest project was 2017's Kong Skull Island, which certainly was not perfect, but I had fun watching it. I have only seen the film once, but none of my issues with it are to do with the directing. Skull Island is dripping in Vietnam era nostalgia, from its time period to its color palette to its soundtrack, and there are some gorgeous shots in there. At the 
very least, he'll have an eye for the scope of the massive Metal Gear mechs based on his experience directing the enormous King Kong. Writer Derek Connolly has had mixed success with his projects. He co-wrote Jurassic World, which was a fun rebirth of the franchise, but that's mainly because it just redid most of the first movie, which is a bona fide classic. Though I am biased and I love dinosaurs, so if I get to see a T-Rex and a raptor fight some crazy hybrid, then that movie gets a win from me. He also co-wrote The Rise of Skywalker, and while that movie was awful, part of the problem was that it had too many hands involved, so it's just as likely that he did the good bits as he did the bad bits. Connolly also has experience with video game properties as he co-wrote Detective Pikachu, which is probably the best live action adaptation out there, helped in no small part by the endlessly charismatic Ryan Reynolds. Producer Avi Arad has been a producer for Marvel properties since the 90s and has helped create some of the really bad ones, but also some of the really good ones. This is the closest we've ever been to a Metal Gear Solid movie and I for one love this casting. Here's hoping his team can break Break the game's movie curse at last, as in recent years things have been getting slightly better. And finally, The Last of Us 2 is winning awards left and right, and I have no doubt that it will also clean up at the Game Awards this week. Whether you like the game or not, it has been a hit with critics and broke PlayStation sales records. As a result, game director, writer, and studio vice president Neil Druckmann has been promoted to co-president of Naughty Dog. In a short statement published by Naughty Dog on Friday, President Evan Wells announced Druckmann's new role, along with his replacements, Alison Mori and Christian Gerling, as vice presidents. On Twitter, Druckmann said, excited to help lead the most amazing group of individuals with my friend and mentor Evan Wells. And big congrats to Christian Gerling and Alison Mori on their well-deserved and overdue promotions. Oh, and I'll still be directing and writing while helping mentor the next wave of creators. So if you really like The Last of Us Part 2, then you can expect more of the same from Naughty Dog's future titles, but if you absolutely hated it like I know many of you did, it may be best to avoid the studio's output going forward. Personally, my thoughts are more to do with how the studio will be run from a management perspective rather than the content of upcoming games. The Last of Us 2 took a lot of heat for crunch culture, and this news could be interpreted as Naughty Dog further endorsing this kind of behaviour, or it could be an opportunity to move more people into senior positions to shoulder more of the burden. Naughty Dog hasn't said what it's currently working on beyond The Last of Us multiplayer, so for now we'll just have to wait and see. And that's it for today, if you enjoyed this no shit format, go ahead and give the video a like to give it a boost, hit subscribe and the bell if you want to stay up to date on all future instalments, toss a coin to your YouTuber over at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. That's all for today, I've been Henry Cooper, bye for now.